Welcome to the Logic FT8 logging video. This will illustrate how to set up WSJTX to, uh, which is a great digital communications for FT8 and other digital modes, and how that can interface into Logic. Uh, first, let's install WSJTX. Go to Setup, and we go to Auto ADIF Logging. Let me just set this all back to default. Okay, there we go. Um, all I want to do right now, though, is go here and bring up the help so I could get the link to install WSJTX. And I want to scroll down to one of these two windows. This one will work in all cases, the 64-bit one be perhaps a little faster and maybe more reliable or make better use of memory. Very few people have a 32-bit uh, Windows anymore, but if you do, uh, use this one if you're not sure. Uh, most of us will just want to do that, so we'll run. Just take all the defaults here. Also, you probably want to grab the documentation. Here's English as a PDF uh, that you could just view online there if you go with the HTML, but I prefer the PDF. It's a lot easier to search and so forth. So get a copy of that. And the first thing we want to do before we try to interface WSJTX to Logic is run the program. There are directories that uh, Logic needs uh, to be able to look into that aren't created until the program is run. And so uh, go ahead and run the program. And then also, let's go ahead and log a QSO. Okay, now everything's up, set up, ready for Logic to work. What I want to do is go here, and I've got to tell Logic where the ADIF file that WSJTX uses is located. Um, for the simple default installation like we did here, just click on this WSJTX button, and it knows where the uh, ADIF file is. It, if you were to click this before you installed WSJTX, uh, it would give you an error saying that, you know, the folder is not found there. So anyway, we've got that going. We set, we'll say OK. Let's go here and let's log that call again. Click on Log QSO. Um, say OK. And there, it just pops into the log. Let me do another one. Let me do, let me do, um, Fay. And we could put a grid in here, e EM86, maybe, I don't know. Um, And it pops in with all the information provided there. If we had the call book hooked up, it would uh, pull in information from the call book. If the rig were interfaced, it would, uh, you know, read the information from the rig, just like logging a queue, so the manual way. Okay, a couple of notes about how the interface works behind the scenes. Uh, Inside of WSJTX, you have, uh, you know, every time you log a QSO, it creates, it, it adds to an ADIF file. And before we had this uh, feature in Logic, uh, you would import the ADIF file after you had finished operating WSJTX. That's no longer necessary. You could still do that, but there's no point to. The only thing to make sure is that Logic is running. We log the QSO on WSJTX. 
Um, I'll also show you how to find that file, the file location yourself. Let's go up to the C drive. We go into users and then look for your username. It's going to be different depending on, you know, what user you have set up. I'm set up as DH. So I go into my user. I go into app data. I go into local. And right there's WSJTX. And we can edit that. And. Okay. There you can see the, the, the ADIF file that I've been making. Once everything's set up, you can delete this ADIF file, uh, you know, do whatever you want to it. You know, as long as logic is running while you're logging in WSJTX, it'll create the new file. Logic will pick up on the new file and read from that and so forth. Um, there's a convenient way in here to, you know, erase that file. And you see it's gone from here, just like if I, you know, deleted it the, the, the manual way. And just to show what, you know, what'll happen is that I can go log another queue. So, and, you know, there it just pops in. And if I go back, there's the log file again with, uh, you know, one queue so in it. This interface is actually not dependent on WSJTX per se. It would work with any logging program that cr creates an ADIF uh, log file as you log. That could include another copy of Logic. Uh, if you have, you know, Logic running on another computer with uh, the safety log feature enabled, so that it the idea is that it makes a backup, it makes a copy of the QSO to a file on a separate drive, just you know, to so you have a, a backup copy. And of course, you could uh, install Logic on a uh, you know cloud drive like Google Drive or Microsoft uh, OneDrive, and you can also. Uh, specify in your logic setup uh, a location across a remote desktop. I was just talking to somebody today who had his WSJT and the rig located at a different location, was running remote desktop, and accessed the WSJTX log file through... Um, through the uh, you know virtual drive that exists when you remote into your computer and the way we can we could do that let's just you know that like blanks that out so that's none but we could do it the manual way and i could navigate to networks here and you know do whatever i needed to do to um, to locate that file I'll put it back, you know, the, 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 if I didn't have that WSJTX default button, I could go to uh, users, go to DH, go to app data, local, WSJTX. And there I can, okay, that it would have, you know, the wrong way, long way of just clicking on here. Um, I'll go over some basic troubleshooting information. If uh, you're logging something in WSJTX that isn't coming over to Logic, um, what you could do is look in the WSJTX log file and say we've run into problems before i think this has been fixed but um like maybe we had a situation where there was a two by three call but the length was only four so it was only logging you know the first three characters of it uh cases where the frequency has been wrong uh grids missing anything like that uh you know first of all upgrade to the latest version of wsjtx and then if something isn't logging or logging improperly, come back and look at this ADIF file. And if you see, of course, there's going to be a whole lot of QSOs in here, uh, you know, as you use it. 
and I think uh, we actually recommend leaving, never deleting the ADIF file because WSJTX uses that law, that ADIF file for other purposes for some of its display or something. So anyway, you can just let it run and build and build and build, but you can just do a find and control F or edit and find and look for the QSO that's in question, compare what's in the ADIF file to what's in logic. And uh, that will determine if we need to do something to logic or if there is uh, something amiss in WSJTX. Okay, finally, uh, WSJTX has a feature where you can run multiple instances of WJST, WSJTX uh, to support multiple ra uh, radios. Um, let me get my shortcut over here that I use to start WS. So I drag the, uh, the uh, shortcut icon for my main monitor over to this one that I'm recording on. Uh, look in that PDF that we downloaded. There's a rig name parameter that lets you uh, support more than one, running more than one copy of WSJTX at the same time. Um, so what I'm going to do is copy this one and I'm going to first of all rename it I'm going to say uh, WSJTX uh, I'm going to call it FT uh, DX1000 okay Uh, yes, I want to rename it. Okay, right now I haven't really done anything but duplicate that and give it a different name. Um, actually, I already have one of these, so let me delete. Uh, so that's okay. I already have one. I already had one with that name over on the other desktop, but that's okay. Um, that's why the two's after it. So I'm going to go into properties. I put uh, dash dash rig name equal FTDX one o o o zero zero zero. Um, this here uh, has to be some kind of legal Windows fo uh, folder name. It'll WSJTX will create a folder with that um, name. So, you know, stick with letters and numbers and dashes and underscores and periods. You'll be pretty safe. There are others that are supported, but those are the basic ones. Uh, okay, and I'll just take and double-click this. Okay, I'm getting this student, you know, this dialogue again. And it opened on my other monitor, so I'll drag everything over here. I'll just get this waterfall display out of the way for now. Do not show again. Okay. Uh, so I have notice up here it says uh, WSJTX FTDX 1000. Uh, let me go back and run my original copy. And there I have... WSJTX running just the, the regular one. It doesn't say FTDX 2000 up here, 1000 up here. Um, so there I can kind of arrange them. I'll get rid of that. Arrange them so that, you know, could see them both. Um, let's see what, uh, the, the, see the folder that got created. Also, one thing we have to do after we... <coughs> Uh, set up the second instance of WJST, WSJTX. You'd set up your rig and so forth. It's a totally different uh, instance of it. Um, I go to... Let me go back to my folder here. I go to local. There's my other... The new directory created by the new instance with the rig name. But I don't have an ADIF file in here. So what I'm going to want to do is go to logic and log and set up. 
and I want to go here and I want to select the ADIF file, but you know, I go to the uh, WSJTX, but there's no log file there for me to select. So let me go ahead and go file. Let me just log in UQ. So DU1DX. Okay, this is the dummy Q. So now you see I've got the ADIF file there. I can tell logic. I can click there. I can say OK. Okay, so let me go ahead and log the real Q. So okay, now that uh, move this back. Okay, here we go. And now that logs here. Uh, this logs here also. So put the N6MR in there also. Uh, one mistake that uh, be careful not to make is when you go in here, there's nothing to keep you from um, looking at the same ADIF file twice. Uh, so if you were to do that, suppose you know you made a mistake and go here and go to uh, let's just go to our default one. Okay, there we go. I'm going to say OK. And this time I'm going to log uh, W1AW. You see it shows up in there twice because there's two instances of this ADIF file manager watching the same file and it's just going to go ahead and do what you told it to do. So I'm going to go here and I'll fix that. You know, I don't want to look at this file twice. I could, you know, clear either one of them. I'm just going to do that one. Uh, no, so each log form supports up to four different ADIF files simultaneously. If perchance you needed more than that, you could go to forms, open another log form, uh, you know, go to mini and uh, let's just do that one. Okay. And I go here to log and set up. And for this log form, I have, you know, it's totally, this log form's not looking at any uh, ADIF files. I can easily, uh, you know, set this up to look at, you know, up to four different programs. And of course, I could have three log files and so forth. Let me delete this duplicate queue. So here. Um, one thing that's important, uh, make sure that you have the latest version of Logic. This was introduced about, um, feature was introduced about uh, mid-March with 9.20.1. Uh, there we go, on the 11th of March. As of this uh, recording, we're on 9.20.3, and it'll probably be on a newer one by the time you... Uh, see this video. So that's about it. We appreciate your watching the video for using Logic. Uh, if you know of any other programs that interface with this uh, ADIF uh, interface that uh, you know can interface to Logic this way, uh, please let us know. We'll uh, put that in our documentation. Uh, thank you for watching.